Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the metabolism of gamma aminobutyric acid, also referred to as GABA. I have a structure right here. This is GABA from a previous video. Um, it's an acronym for gamma aminobutyric acid, and it's actually synthesized directly in one step from glutamate. Now, we know that there are several ways to get to glutamate. Um, we can either siphon off alpha ketoglutarate from the TCA cycle, that's an anaplerotic reaction, and we can convert that to glutamate through a number of transaminase reactions, etc. Or we can use glutaminase to remove the ammonia group from glutamine on the R group, and that gives us glutamate. Now, glutamate is, is converted to GABA in central nervous system neurons through an enzyme called glutamate decarboxylase. It's just a simple decarboxylation, and specifically one thing to realize that if you were to look at the structure of glutamate, it's specifically removing the alpha carboxyl group, not the R group carboxyl group of glutamate, but the alpha carboxyl group. In fact, if you were to look at the structure of, of GABA, if you imagine a carboxyl group coming right off of here, this carbon, that would be glutamate. So you can see that's the carboxyl that's removed, and then we have the structure of GABA. All right, one thing I want to make perfectly clear here, because this is kind of a way you can save money if you're buying GABA supplements. GABA supplements do not work. There is no evidence that they work. Um, in theory, from a very superficial perspective, they might seem like they would. You intake GABA, it relaxes you. doesn't work like that. The reason is because all of the GABA that your brain central nervous system neurons use, they make endogenously, meaning that the GABA that is used by the brain neurons is made by those neurons, meaning they can't just intake GABA and then, it, and then package it into a vesicle and then exocytose it for synaptic transmission. They make it endogenously. They biosynthesize it directly from glutamate. Okay, So for that reason, they can't, you can't just take a GABA supplement and, and it'll relax you. Okay, The other reason you can't do that is, the second reason is that GABA cannot even cross the blood-brain barrier. Okay, GABA is highly charged. Okay, it has a negative carboxyl group, a positive charge over here on the amine at physiological pH, and most of the things that can cross the blood-brain barrier are hydrophobic molecules. Okay, that's why if you look at commonly prescribed, say, psychiatric drugs such as a benzodiazepine, it's largely hydrophobic, so it can cross the blood-brain barrier. GABA is polar. It's not hydrophobic, so it can't even cross the blood-brain barrier in the first place. So even if those neurons in the brain could, for some reason, intake that GABA, package it, and then secrete it to, in, in uh, neuron transmission, it can't even cr cross the blood-brain barrier in the first place. So that hopefully could save you some money because GABA supplements do not work. In fact, there's no evidence that they do in the first place. Okay, now. What happens when we have GABA? What do we do with it to get rid of it? Like any molecule that we biosynthesize, we usually have a way to get rid of it. Turns out that GABA is going to be actually put into the TCA cycle through two reactions. So first of all, GABA is going to be transaminated by an enzyme called 4-aminobutyrate transaminase, also called gamma transaminase, to generate something called succinate semialdehyde. I don't have a structure here, but if you imagine this amine getting oxidized into an aldehyde, so we have a carboxyl over here, and this carbon is now an aldehyde, that's the molecule succinate semialdehyde. Now, that molecule is very close to succinate. We just have to transform that one aldehyde into a carboxylate. So we have an enzyme called succinate semialdehyde dehydrogenase, which is going to be able to convert succinate semialdehyde into succinate, which is then going to be placed into the TCA cycle. Okay, So GABA biosynthesis, very short, just one step from glutamate. Its degradation is two steps, and it's put into the TCA cycle. So something useful that we can get out of it. We can see here, this is the compartmental, compartmentalization of GABA metabolism. So first of all, the synthesis of by glutamate decarboxylase, which occurs in the neurons, you can see occurs in the cytosol of these neurons. Okay? However, when they want to get rid of GABA, GABA has to be transported somehow into the mitochondria. So all these reactions take place in the mitochondria, which makes sense because the TCA cycle that you're funneling it into is in the mitochondria. So GABA transaminase 
to succinate semialdehyde, that's mitochondrial, and so is succinate semialdehyde dehydrogenase to get succinate, okay? And we know what happens to succinate. It's a TCA cycle intermediate, gets oxidized into fumarate, and we get the whole TCA cycle here, okay? So biosynthesis versus degradation, they are actually structurally compartmentalized, which is kind of cool, okay? So hopefully this video gave you a little bit of intuition on GABA metabolism. Um, make sure to like this video and subscribe for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.